so in this picture the three directions can be clearly uh, seen um, the center part is the called the pith and the transition directions as i mentioned uh, the reference point can be raised cells or it can also be the growth rings if the growth rings are visible if you make a tangent to the growth rings that plane we call them as tangential if it is uh, perpendicular to the growth ring or parallel to the ray cells that is called radial sections so in these two directions uh, uh, because of their anatomical differences because the ray cells they are uh, they are basically like uh, lines and uh, they help in conduction to some extent as compared to the uh, radial directions so how the electrical property changes so the longitudinal conductivity of wood was almost uh, two to three times greater than the radial directions and uh, among the two um, uh, among the two uh, that is orthogonal direction that is uh, perpendicular to uh, tangent uh, longitudinal that is radial and the tangential the values are more for radial directions as compared to tangential directions so uh, uh, in a north cell the longitudinal uh, conductivity is around two to three times higher and uh, in uh, radial directions and it can go up to four times uh, with respect to the tangential directions but if you take the ratio at around eight percent moisture content it comes to almost uh, a constant value uh, minimum is the ratio of tangential to radial uh, conductivity is almost constant and uh, reaches um, around uh, one at a moisture content of about eight percent and it gradually increases to up to fsp the chemistry of wood um, uh, also affects the electrical conductivity as well uh, and uh, resistivity of wood and uh, as i mentioned although the moisture content is very crucial but uh, the, the, uh, the quantity and type of uh, um, chemicals present in that water, they control the electrical conductivity of wood. Uh, the conductivity is a function of the uh, ions present in the wood, and or maybe we call them electrolytes. And uh, depending on the quantity of those electrolytes, the electrical property changes. And uh, the, the chemical, uh, the constitutive wood, of wood can be classified into uh, two broad groups. We call them as uh, principal components, that is basic, basic building blocks. They are cellulose, hemicellulose, and lignin. And uh, besides that, there are some extractives present and some extraneous material, which uh, like uh, inorganic material, such as uh, uh, we call them as ash content. And we cannot extract them, but we can uh, find them once we burn the wood we call them as ash content so the presence of uh, different type of chemicals they can affect the il um, electrical properties and as far as the basic constituents are concerned uh, they are cellulose hemicellulose and lignin and uh, as i mentioned in the beginning these three building blocks they have OH molecules and because of that wood is hygroscopic and they can retain a lot of water and water uh, uh, it works as a solvent for the electrolytes and uh, those presence of electrolytes, they help in conduction of electricity inside the wood. So much of this variability in the electrical properties of the wood um, uh, can be uh, attributed to the extractives and mineral constituents. And uh, the chemical constituents, uh, mostly as I told, uh, the chemical constituents affect the, uh, the basic, basically the basic chemical constituents like cellulose, hemicellulose, and lignin, they can affect the adsorption behavior, like the moisture absorbing properties of wood and in which in turn can affect the electrical properties. If uh, it can retain more moisture, then the conductivity uh, will be definitely affected. As I uh, uh, explained earlier, the moisture content uh, has a direct relevance with the electrical uh, properties of wood. And uh, it is shown that if the lignin content increases, <clears throat> uh, the figure shows the electrical conductivity in relation to lignin content, and the, the left graph uh, so the open dry wood which was uh, dried to zero percent moisture content and the right graph says uh, the uh, wood which has been equilibrated to 65 percent uh, relative humidity so we can clearly see that uh, once uh, <clears throat> the moisture uh, the electrical conductivity uh, uh, in the left side you know the it is around 10 to the part uh, 18 uh, mega ohm per centimeter uh, while in case of uh, uh, equilibrated root it is somewhere around it reduces to 10 to the power 10 uh, so that means the resistivity increases once the moisture content also in increases and uh, the lignin content can have uh, effect in uh, the moisture substance and which also which in turn can affect the electrical conductivity or electrical properties of wood so electrical conductivity of isolated lignin is around 10 to the power uh, minus 13 
mega more per centimeter and which is substantially greater than for vacuum dried wood. So DC conductivity of wood species increased linearly with their respective lignin contents, both for vacuum dried woods as uh, 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 both for vacuum as well as moisture when it has uh, uh, condition to 65 percent RS. So the mineral content varies considerably among woods, both with respect to kind and quantity, uh, because uh, depending on the growth parameters, like you know, some uh, the species uh, which are grown in coastal area, the, the salt content can be more, and uh, the uh, species which can which are grown in a desert area, the salt content can also be more. So these, uh, when the salt content or uh, electrolyte content increases in the uh, um, wood, it can have a better uh, conductivity, so the resistance can be <coughs> uh, low. So the electric and conductivity is directly proportional to the ion content. So, that, uh, so uh, if we would treat wood with various preservatives or maybe some uh, uh, fire retardant chemicals, they can also affect the uh, uh, electrical properties of wood uh, because the uh, uh, presence of ions uh, can improve the electrical conductivity and reduce the resistivity of wood. So, however, if, if we consider the extractives, they can be classified into two groups. Maybe uh, we call them at water soluble and uh, non water soluble. So, if the wood contains more water soluble um, extractives, then the resistivity, uh, the conductivity will be more and the resistivity will be less. And uh, if it contains uh, more organic solvent, I mean non water soluble extractives, then the conductivity will not be in, uh, affected much because um, if dissociation is the happening, uh, if dissociation happens in uh, water particularly, then uh, they can have uh, positive and uh, uh, negative ions and they can have, uh, influence the electrical properties of wood. So, in general, non water soluble extractives are expected to decrease the conductivity of wood since they are generally poor conductors causing uh, discontinuities in the conductive path in moist wood. And uh, water soluble extra extractives on the other hand may have the op opposite effect, particularly at higher moisture contents. So wood with high uh, extractive contents such as many tropical woods exhibit greater individuality than wood grown in temperate climates, particularly in their conductivity uh, moisture content behavior. So in a nutshell, I would, I would suggest, uh, I, I would, um, I'll brief that um, the most of the electrical properties of wood are a function of water and the presence of uh, electrolytes. Uh, uh, um, uh, in case of uh, wood, uh, in a standing tree, the moisture content, as I, uh, uh, as I mentioned, because in the previous lecture, uh, the moisture content was, which was shown between sapwood and hardwood, uh, it was based on um, the moisture content determined at, uh, at the test condition. But in a standing tree, the moisture content can range uh, from, as I mentioned, it can go up to 200%. And the difference uh, the, between sapwood and hardwood can be substantial and for, for instance the sapwood always contains higher moisture content as compared to hardwood if it is not dried in a standing tree so because of the huge difference in the moisture content the electrical conductivity of sapwood and hardwood will be significantly different and these differences can be uh, uh, can be sensed by um, uh, that ERT machines and uh, they can graph the uh, ent internal structure uh, based on the electrical resistance pattern. And uh, in, again, in case of sap wood, as, as the name suggests, it contains a lot of moisture. Sap also is present in the wood. And uh, in, because it is mostly conductive tissues are present in sap wood and electrolytes, uh, that is a lot of minerals uh, that is transported from, uh, root, from soil through root to the top. Uh, the uh, sap content uh, and including the mineral content in the sap wood is higher as compared to the hardwood. So that's why the, uh, the conductivity of sap wood can be uh, substantially higher because of higher moisture content and because of higher salt content. At the same time, the, uh, the electrical properties of hardwood can be uh, comparatively lower because the water content in hardwood is substantially lower. And uh, we always uh, believe that hardwood is nothing, it is a physiologically dead tissue. So they don't uh, participate in any physiological activity except mechanical support. So uh, because they are dead, dead cells, so they are accumulated with a lot of extractives. And most of the extractives are polyphenols and, um, and non-water soluble chemicals are present. So uh, and as, uh, as such, you know, as I mentioned that uh, non-water soluble chemicals are 
uh, they don't affect much to the electrical conduct uh, conductivity. So comparatively, the electrical conductivity is less in sap hardwood as compared to the sap wood. So because of these differences, uh, it is possible to determine the uh, extent of sap wood and hardwood in a standing tree, and uh, uh, so that uh, um, without any um, invasive method we can uh, we can ascertain and we can scan a lot of uh, tree species when it is uh, still in the field condition however there are uh, there will be certain difficulties because um, when you talk about um, uh, timbers like uh, sandalwood uh, oil is also present so um, how the oil affects the electrical properties that also needs to be taken into account while in other species uh, it may not be that um, like uh, teak or other species where uh, oil content is not that much. Uh, so the most of the principles what I have described here uh, can hold good, can hold good in determining or segregating uh, ascertaining or ascertaining the sapwood and hardwood percentage. But in case of timber where uh, oil contents are present, and uh, they, uh, it is necessary that we should also look into how this uh, uh, oil affects the electrical behavior of wood, how they can influence. So. Um, I think in the next lecture, uh, the complete uh, uh, practical um, methodology, what was uh, what has been carried out on Sunday, when it will be presented, uh, so it it will have a, uh, it will give a clear picture whether the technology effective even in case of sandalwood or not. So, thank you.